Hi, and welcome back to the fourth in the series of informational videos about nutrition and pancreatic cancer. These videos are being brought to you by Wellspring, in partnership with Pancreatic Cancer Canada. My name is Rachel Reed, and I'm a clinical dietitian specializing in the care of cancer patients at the Odette Cancer Centre in Toronto. I'm delighted to be able to share information with you about pancreatic cancer and nutrition. I will be providing a series of four short videos focusing on the importance of pancreatic enzymes, diabetes and pancreatic cancer treatment, pre-surgery nutrition, and this video focusing on symptom management. Let's talk about some common symptoms during cancer treatment and some nutritional strategies to help manage them. Poor appetite is an extremely common symptom for pancreatic cancer patients. This can be the result of the cancer itself, it can be related to our emotions, it can be from the treatments, or it can be any combination of these things. The challenge is that even though you may be experiencing a poor appetite, getting proper nutrition is still extremely important during treatment. So we need to find some strategies to make eating easier for you. When you have a poor appetite, the idea of sitting down to a regular meal can be very off-putting. Many patients find it more manageable to eat small, frequent meals every one to two hours. Even if it seems like you're having a small amount, if you're doing this frequently, it can really add up by the end of the day. Remember that every bite you take counts. For example, try keeping some nuts or other snack near you when you're watching TV or reading a book and nibble on them while you're doing the activity. When you don't have an appetite, you don't have an internal cue telling you it's time to eat now. And then it can be very easy to go hours and hours without eating, which is difficult to make up for at the end of the day. Using external cues to remind yourself to eat can be very useful. Try setting a timer on your phone for meals and snacks, or having a family member or friend text you to remind you to eat. Even making a meal schedule and crossing off your meal and snack every time you eat can be a useful strategy. Thirdly, focus on high nutrient fluids. It is extremely important to stay hydrated during your treatment, so many patients drink water. If you substitute that water for fluids with calories and protein, you're not only helping your hydration needs, but you will also get some extra nutrition out of it. Switch out water for beverages like milk, chocolate milk, sports drinks, juice, or commercial nutrition supplements. This is a great way to get easy calories during the day. Sometimes drinking liquid nutrition is easier than consuming a traditional meal when you don't have an appetite, so using smoothies or pureed food as a meal replacement can be useful. Try blending up a high-calorie, high-protein smoothie and sipping on it throughout the morning or the afternoon. Finally, remember to include some physical activity in your day, as much as possible. This can be as simple as just walking around the house for a few minutes. Activity stimulates our appetite and can make you feel hungrier. Our second symptom is early satiety. Similar to low appetite, feeling full quickly or early satiety is a very common side effect of pancreatic cancer. When you're not able to eat the volume of food that you normally do at meal times, we need to spread that intake out throughout the day. So rather than three meals, consider six to eight snacks during the day. Try limiting your fluids at meal times. If you're drinking liquids at meals, this can fill your stomach up more quickly and prevent you from finishing your meal or snack. Remember that foods tend to have more nutrition in them than beverages. Very high fat foods such as fried foods and oils can contribute to that feeling of fullness. That's because fat takes longer to digest in our bodies than carbohydrates or proteins. So when we have a high fat meal, we feel fuller for longer. To manage this, try spreading those fats out over the day or have them in different ways. Try adding high fat foods to smoothies where they are already partially broken down before they reach our stomach. For example, adding avocado into a smoothie can be a great choice. This is usually better tolerated by patients. Higher fiber foods can also contribute to that feeling of fullness. Unfortunately, fiber also takes longer for our bodies to digest and makes us fuller for longer. So reducing some of those very high fiber foods, such as switching out whole grain bread for white bread or brown rice for white rice, while you're experiencing this side effect can help with this. We want to make sure patients' bowels are moving well. When we're constipated, we're more likely to have a reduced appetite and feel full quickly because the food that we're eating isn't moving through us as quickly as it should. So having a good bowel regime and talking to your healthcare team if you're experiencing constipation can help. Finally, there are some medications to help if you're experiencing early satiety. These medications help move food through your gut more quickly. 
So talk to your doctor or healthcare team if this is an ongoing issue for you. Thirdly, let's talk about nausea and vomiting. The number one way to manage nausea and vomiting is with medication. We have really good medication regimes to help control nausea and or vomiting. And the first step to eating better when you have these symptoms is getting them under control because no one wants to eat when they're nauseated. Normally, I make sure patients are taking their nausea medications as prescribed. Often when I speak to patients, they will say, I don't really like to take medications, so I'm trying to take as little as possible or something along those lines. And I like to remind them that the better they feel, the better able they will be able to take care of themselves and heal well during treatment. So taking nausea medications as prescribed is important. And if the medications aren't working for you, then please let your healthcare team know because there are usually other medications to try. When you're experiencing nausea, there are a few nutrition tips to help make eating easier. First, focus on eating bland foods that are easy on the stomach. Things like dry crackers, bread, mashed potatoes, and lean proteins like chicken or tofu. I find patients are better able to tolerate foods like this when they're having problems with nausea. Also remember that not having anything in your stomach can make nausea even worse. So if you haven't eaten anything in a few hours, try nibbling on some dry crackers or something similar as this will help ease your nausea. Eliminate strong odors from your house because that can trigger nausea and vomiting. This is a time to have friends and family do some cooking for you so you can reduce those food smells as much as possible. Pre-made meals can also be a good option. If you are cooking, make sure you open the windows and avoid those strong smelling foods like fish or cabbage. You can also try having room temperature foods such as pudding or cold mashed potatoes as they tend to have less strong odors. Along the same lines, while your nausea is improving, avoid strong tasting foods like overly sweet, greasy, or spicy foods. Bad tastes in the mouth can contribute to nausea, so having good oral hygiene can help. Particularly for patients on chemotherapy, they complain of a constant bad taste in their mouth, so try rinsing before and after eating. Your cancer institution should be able to give you a good recipe for mouthwash while you're on treatment. Make sure to eliminate stress from meals as it can contribute to feelings of anxiety and nausea. Make sure you're eating in a relaxed environment away from distractions. Finally, if you're having a bad episode of vomiting, it is still very important to stay well hydrated. So take small sips of sports drinks or try sucking on some ice chips or popsicles. This will help keep your fluid intake up. Finally, let's talk about taste changes. Taste changes are also a common side effect for patients on treatments, particularly chemotherapy. There are, I would say, four types of taste changes patients experience. Firstly, patients will find foods taste too sweet. If this is the case, try using tart flavors such as lemon or citrus to reduce that sweet taste. Salt can also be useful to reduce that sweet taste. For example, some patients say they find Ensure too sweet and sometimes a pinch of salt can make it more tolerable. Secondly, sometimes patients will find foods taste metallic. If this is the case, try using plastic utensils rather than metal ones and avoid tin foods if possible. Try and reduce the metallic taste by marinating meats before cooking or substitute meats for foods that are less likely to have that metallic taste. For example, chicken and turkey are normally more tolerable than beef or lamb and plant-based alternatives are an excellent choice like tofu or legumes. Thirdly, if food tastes too tart, try adding sweetness to reduce that taste. So things like maple syrup and honey or sweet fruits like bananas or mango for flavoring. Finally, if all food is tasting bad, try new foods. You may find your favorite foods taste terrible and foods you never used to like taste good to you now. I often hear patients say, I would have never eaten this food before treatment. If you find a few things that you like, it's fine to eat them many times during the day when you're on treatment. We're less worried about variety and more worried about you getting enough nutrition. To help with those off tastes, remember to rinse your mouth regularly, particularly before and after you eat. You can also try sucking on some hard candies to help activate your salivary glands and cover up any bad taste that's in your mouth. As I said before, experiment. When food tastes different, there's no one solution for everyone. Normally, it's a lot of trial and error and finding something that works for you.
I hope you found this information to be helpful to you. And I hope that you too find ways to overcome some of your nutritional challenges while going through pancreatic cancer. Thank you for listening.